Hey guys, it's Beth, and I apologize for my voice today. I've had a nasty cold for the last week, and I'm still not quite over it, but I wanted to get this video recorded before Christmas, and so hopefully my voice will make it through this video, but bear with me. Today I have a very easy, very budget-friendly winter decor DIY for you. I love the look of all like the birch logs or birch branches that get used in decor, especially for like Christmas and the winter season. And I think even sometimes in the fall, but I don't necessarily want to pay the price for them at the stores. And unfortunately we don't have any birch trees that I could go cut some off of. But I know that Michael's has like back in the back or in the back of our store where they have their DIY wood and metal items. They do have some like smaller birch logs and I don't remember how much they cost, but I know it was more than what I wanted to pay. And then when I was looking at Michael's for Christmas decorations, I noticed that they had, it was like a three pack of birch logs and for like $15 or something. I, I have a picture, I will put that in. And I, I liked them, but I could tell by feeling that it was like flimsier paper than this and just cardboard. And so even though they were 50% off, so maybe seven, eight dollars is what I would have had to pay. I was like, I could totally make that for a whole lot cheaper and maybe even a little sturdier than what theirs was. So that's what I did. I don't know if any of you have ever bought the clearance packs of paper from Hobby Lobby, you know, where they just package up a bunch, <coughs> excuse me, random paper. And it's like 50 sheets and it's $5. I'm a sucker for those packs. I buy them all the time. And most of the paper I could kind of see myself using in specific projects. I mean, most of it can easily be used in cards or scrapbooks, but I ended up with a bunch of this birch wood grain paper and really had no idea how I was going to use that. I did end up using some in some cards and bookmarks for Cards for Soldiers, but I still had a bunch left. So when I saw those logs at Michael's, I was like, oh, finally, I have a use for this paper. So this paper, it's actually from the Paper House Productions, and it's called Birch Bark. I don't know if you can see that, and it was regular 60 cents, like when Hob at Hobby Lobby's old pricing. Uh, and I got it for 10 cents in that pack. So, and for each of my logs, I got about two logs out of each piece of paper. So it managed to get me, you know, each didn't take me many sheets of paper to make the logs that I have. So what I did was I just saved cardboard rolls and my rolls are, this one was, this one's nice and thick. I love this one. And it was from, I think a craft paper, like packing paper roll. That you can kind of see, oh, I gotta focus, how thick that one was. And then I have just a paper towel roll. And then this was a wrapping paper roll that I cut down and I, don't really, I didn't really like the cut ends, um, just because it was, didn't, with my craft knife, it didn't cut very cleanly, but I wanted some varied lengths, and so these two were like already there, and I just cut this one down to the size I needed. You could easily just use paper towel rolls if you wanted them all the same size, or even if you wanted a smaller version, your toilet paper rolls, um, or you could cut your paper towel rolls down. And then once I had my rolls, I had my girls, we went through the um, recycle bin and we pulled out all of our newspaper or the store ads or any copy paper that was in there and we crumpled it all up and then we just stuffed it down inside the tubes because I wanted it to have some strength to it because most of the cardboard rolls, you know, if you squeeze them, you know, you could flatten them pretty quickly, pretty easily. And so if I had them stacked or stuffed into something or bound together, I wanted them to have some strength to them so they wouldn't collapse on themselves so easily. So we stuffed them really well, like they're nice and tight. And then I went through and looked at all of my circle punches or circle dies and found ones that were the right size for the end of each roll of tube that I had. And once I got those cut, and I just used craft paper, 
like scraps of craft paper. And so then I glued those on and in hindsight, I would have waited until I wrapped my roll with my, my birch paper before I put my ends on. Cause you know, sometimes when I was holding the paper on, like it, you know, flattened the tube enough that the end kind of popped off. But anyway, no one's going to notice that. So once I had my ends on, I measured my tubes and then measured the length of my tubes. I cut my paper down and then I did a kind of a, just a practice roll of the paper just to see what I needed my width to be. And so then I got that cut down. And like I said, most times I was able to get two rolls out of each sheet of paper. And then you can see this one's fun to pop off. But So next I'm going to just use regular Mod Podge. And I'm going to do part of my roll. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna pull that off. I will, there's my paper. You can see how it's stuffed with the paper. So anyway, I'm gonna do my roll with the Mod Podge. And then I'm going to do part of my paper. And then I'm going to take the part of the roll that has the Mod Podge on it and I'm going to line it up, line my roll up with my paper. So then my ends meet, ends line up. And then I want to press Mod Podge on my fingers. Press this down, like the ends down, so it's going to stay. And so sometimes you may have to hold it for a little bit. I want to make sure it's going to stay glued down. And then I could use a little more Mod Podge. And so once that's down, then I can come back in and do the rest of my roll. And the rest of my paper. And then I want to roll that up, trying to stay as straight as I can. And then when I get to the end here, you're going to have this flap, and I just come back in with my brush. And I've got Mod Podge on both sides of the brush, and so I can get the inside layer and the outside layer. And then I just hold that down. And this is one Mod Podge project where I'm not worried about like bumps or bubbles, air bubbles or creases in the paper. Because when have you ever seen a totally smooth branch or log? Um, so even though the paper tries to give you some dimension, you know, the bubbles kind of give you a little bit added realistic feel of a log. <coughs> Excuse me. So then once that is down, then I will come back in and I'm going to seal it with my Mod Podge just to make sure it's going to stay on and then it kind of seals the paper and gives it a little bit of structure. And this is one other reason why it would be easier to wait to put your ends on the tubes because then it gives you something to hold on to when you're trying to seal it. And then I usually do two coats of Mod Podge on top of my paper just to make sure it's all sealed well and good. So I'm going to set that one aside and let it dry. but. So basically, like I, I have some other tubes, but like these are the three that I have done. And I may come in and tie them in some twine, you know, like tie them together. And then I have this pick from the Dollar Tree that I may pull off these evergreen pieces and glue them down under the twine. I, I don't know, I'm kind of undecided on that part, but I use... I like to use these in my winter decor because it's always so sad to me after Christmas 
when you take down all of your Christmas decorations, all of the lights, all of the colorful and festive decorations, just is so depressing. I know most people are ready to have it down and like have their clean, you know, more of a, just a clean, simpler look to their house, but for some reason it always depresses me. So I'm a big winter decorator as well. So like a lot of my greenery, if it's just greenery and white lights, I will leave it up and I can use some pine cones and some wood elements like this. I also decorate with snowflakes and snowmen throughout January just because, I don't know, the letdown after Christmas gets to me a lot because it's just, you know, there's so much work that goes into Christmas and then, you know, you have Christmas Day and then it's just kind of, you know, that's it. And then all the decorations come down after New Year's and then winter here in the Midwest, it's just gray and brown and depressing. So... I like to have some decorations. So what I would do with these is stick them in. I do crates of greenery and then would put like these logs in there and then some pine cones and some white lights. And then that I kind of place them throughout the house, like in front of our fireplace, our gas fireplace that we can't use or like in our bedroom or in our entryway just to get some pops of light and some pops of color in the greenery. So I like to use these a lot and I'm excited that my one sheet of paper was 10 cents and if I got two of these logs out of a sheet of paper like this trio of logs cost me maybe 75 cents total in all of my supplies and then the ones even on sale at Michael's were going to be what seven dollars so cha-ching on that one and then as a bonus project I've also seen these like birch type pillars at Michael's and you can get them I've seen like these are, this one's a pillar candle and I know you can also get the, like the tea light candle holders or even a pillar candle holder <coughs> and it's the birch wood and I know the candles I saw at Michael were like $9.99 for a three inch candle or $12.99 for, uh, I don't know if it was four or five inches, but this is just a battery operated pillar candle and it's not Dollar Tree because it's actually kind of hefty, so I'm sure I got it at Hobby Lobby, probably on sale for maybe $3. And then this birch paper, I actually did this one last year for my winter decoration. This birch paper is from a paper pack that I have, and so I just cut it down, measured my candle, cut the paper down to the size of the candle, did a practice wrap, figure out where I needed to cut it for my width. And I did not use Mod Podge on this because I didn't want it to be permanently adhered to the candle. I wanted to be able to take it off at some point and reuse the candle. So once I wrapped it, all I did is I have a piece of score tape here that holds it together. So again, my $3 candle versus, you know, a $9 or more candle. This one is totally in my budget. So I hope you guys are able to use these ideas. It's a, another way to use up your paper. Like I said, I've had this paper in my stash for a while from the Hobby Lobby clearance paper. So I'm super excited to find a way to use it up. And it's a way to decorate for winter, which is, you know, today is actually Christmas Eve Eve. So, <coughs> you know, we're gonna be transitioning to winter decorations here in the next week. So I wanted to go ahead and get this out and give you guys this idea. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you do use this, if you do make these, I would love to see how you do it. You can tag us on Instagram with a picture of your project or email us a picture of your project. Both our Instagram and email are in the description below. Otherwise, like I said, it's Christmas Eve Eve. So I just want to take the opportunity to thank you guys for all of your love and support so far this year. And I wish you all the very best and that you have a very Merry Christmas and enjoy time with your family and friends. Stay safe, be merry, I love you guys. Merry Christmas.